Welcome back to our third and final lecture for Chapter 10, Measuring a Nation's Income. As you can see from the board behind me, there is a ton of information. Um, this is largely coming from Table 2 in the reading in your textbook, so make sure you're taking a look at that. So um, you should be breezing through this now once with me, again in the uh, PowerPoint slide lecture, and then also through the reading as well. That's three at-bats. Your homework is your fourth at-bat. So if you get four attempts at this something, it's something I feel like you're going to be pretty good at it. But if you're trying to skip attempts, it's going to come back to bite you. It's a lot of information. Uh, let's start at the top. So what are we looking at here? Well, I like to call this my hot dog economy. Even though they're hot dogs and hamburgers, we're going to measure GDP with a big old assumption that the only thing that this economy does is buy and sell hot dogs. Doesn't that sound like a or hot dogs and hamburgers, I should say. Doesn't that sound like a utopia? It's my kind of spot. Um, so GDP here is just simply consumption of hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, let's break down the information. Again, I'm working off of Table 2 on page 196 in your reading, Section 10-4, um, looking at GDP in real terms versus nominal terms. We have three years here, going slightly in the future, 2019, 2020, and 2021. We have price of hot dogs, quantity of hot dogs, price of hamburgers, quantity of hamburgers. And what we're looking at is that the price of hot dogs from three years goes from $1, $2, to $3. Keep that in mind. The quantity of hot dogs, this is a growing economy, so um, people are just consuming more and more every year. 100 hot dogs in 2019, 150 in 2020. Uh, 200 hot dogs in 2021. Again, if I'm going too fast, this is table two in your book. Um, <clears throat> then we have the price of hamburgers, which goes from $2, $3 to $4. So we do have some inflation. We have to account for that here in a bit. Um, <clears throat> the quantity of hamburgers goes from 50 to 100 to 150. So this economy is growing. Secondly, we're going to calculate what's called nominal GDP. Now, while we're calcu calculating GDP, we just say, hey, C plus I plus G plus NX. In this example, the only thing we have is C, and the only two things we're buying are hot dogs and hamburgers. So we have to express that in market value. All right? So how do you compare hot dogs and hamburgers? You compare them in dollar figures because they're all bought. All right, so in 2019, I had the price of hot dogs was one buck, and I sold 100 of them. So I take one dollar, multiply by 100. I sold uh, 50 hamburgers at two dollars, so two times 50 plus one times 100, I get a total nominal. Now, nominal means everyday prices, whatever the price of gas is when you drive down the street, that's nominal. We're not considering for inflation here. Okay, so a nominal GDP figure of 2019, again, one times 100, one dollar times 100 hot dogs, two times 50, two dollars times 50 hot dogs. You add that up, you get 200 dollars nominal GDP. That's just whatever today's price is. Same thing for 2020. Um, price of hot dogs was two dollars. Quantity of hot dogs was 150. Price of hamburgers was three dollars. Quantity was 100. So again, two dollars times 150 hot dogs plus three dollars times 100 hamburgers, I have a nominal GDP in 2020 of $600. So my economy is growing. That's good news. 2021, we had price of hot dogs at three bucks. So we multiplied that by the quantity of hot dogs was 200 because the economy is growing. We add that to the price of hamburgers multiplied by the quantity of hamburgers. Four times 150 plus three times 200, we get $1,200. So what we've seen our, our nominal economy in terms of nominal terms grow from a GD, nominal GDP of 200 to a nominal GDP of 600 to a nominal GDP of 1200. That would be phenomenal growth in, in, in the economy. Um, however, we have to account for inflation. So what happened to prices here? Well, they went from one to two to three in three years for hot dogs. They went from two, three, four in hamburgers. So that's significant growth in the economy because we measure it in dollar terms just because prices went up. Did that mean we were all that more productive? Well, yes and no. Quantities went up, which means they're going to have to produce more hot dogs and hamburgers. But the numbers are skewed because the prices went up as well. And when prices go up, that's called inflation. Now, nominal terms, nominal prices, nominal GDP, we just use today's price. And next year, we use next year's price. And the year after that, we use the next year's price. But real prices and real GDP account for inflation. We take that out and we say, okay, what's really going on here? Is it as explosive, this nominal GDP going from 200 to 600 to 1200, is it as explosive a growth as we think, or is it just because the prices are going up? Well, if prices are going up, that's not necessarily a great thing. That's inflation. 
So let's account for what the effect of the prices are. So we calculate real GDP, meaning we take inflation out, and we value our GDP at constant prices. So 2019 is going to be our base year because that's where we started, and we're going to take out inflation for every year after that. So what you're seeing here is in 2019, the price was $1. Well, take what? I want to keep $1 as the price throughout. I want to take out all the inflation. Because when we went from $1 price of hot dog to $2, there was a dollar inflation. We went from $1 uh, to $3 in hot dogs from 2019 to 2021, there was $2 inflation. So I'm taking out $1 inflation here, $2 inflation here. And I'm changing the price back to the base year, one, one, one. Okay? Same thing with hamburgers. From 2019 to 2020, there was a dollar inflation. From 2019 to 2021, there were $2 inflation. I'm just going to take that out. So I've got $2 as my base year. I've got $3 minus the inflation of $1, which brings us back to $2. And then in 2021... $4 minus the $2 inflation, I'm back to $2, so I got $2, $2, $2, $1, $1, $1 with a hot dog. So I'm taking out the effect of inflation, and now I'm going to get what's really going on in the economy. What kind of real growth am I getting when I take out inflation? I'm going to see, hey, how much more are we selling? That is a true measure of the economy in real terms. So $1 times a quantity of 100 $1 times a quantity of 150 $1 times a quantity of 200 over the three years. Okay, let's do it year by year. Let me back up. So let's just look at 2019. I sold 100 hot dogs at a dollar a piece in real terms. I sold 50 hamburgers at two dollars a piece in real terms. So one times 100 plus two times 50, my real GDP is 200. You're like, well, that's the same. These are the same. Okay, these are the same. This right here, though, is going to be my real GDP. Okay. So let's look at 2020. Now again, we take out a dollar of inflation. We take from two dollars down to one dollar, so we take out a dollar inflation times 150 hot dogs, and we add that to two dollars times 100 hamburgers. Again, removing inflation here. Two times 100 plus one times 150, we get a real GDP of 350. Now we're starting to see a bit of a difference here. Compare here. 350 real GDP versus 600 nominal GDP. Did the economy grow? Yes, but not by 400 bucks. It grew by 150 when we take out the fact that prices went up over time. Does that give you a better snapshot of what's really happening in this economy? Yes, it's growing, but not by triple. Okay, not by triple, not from going from 200 to 300. It's going from 200 or 200 to 600 rather. It's going from 200 to 350. So it is growth, but it's not as explosive. So real GDP paints a real picture when you take out the effects of inflation. Now, in 2021, we had $2 inflation back to the base year of 2019. Price of hot dogs went from $1 to $3. We're going to take, it, take all the inflation back and go back to $1. The price of hamburgers went from $2 to $4. We're going to take out all that inflation and go back to $2. Okay, so we sold 200 hot dogs at a real price. Because, you know, over three years, did the price of a hot dog really triple? Or is that just inflation? That's some sort of outside influence. Uh, perhaps the government printed a bunch of money and it became worth a little pause less. And so it takes more of them to buy a hot dog or more of them to buy a hamburger. We've got to take that effect out, okay? So what we got here is $1 in real prices times 200 hot dogs plus $2 real price of hamburger times... 150, which is the quantity we sold in that year, and we get a real GDP of 50, or $500, excuse me, $500, compared to the nominal GDP of 1200 So in three years, our nominal GDP went from $200 to 1200 when in real terms, when we're taking out the effects of inflation in terms of real sales, real hot dogs and hamburgers being consumed, we go from 200 to 500 Still great growth. The economy more than doubled. However, it didn't go up by a factor of six. So you have to be very careful. You have to account for inflation and make sure you're using real prices versus nominal. Take out the inflation. You know what's really happening. Because half, more than half, of this growth in nominal, you know, saying times six here, this is more or less time two and a half here, of growth was related to inflation and not real consumption. And when we're looking at GDP, we're looking at real consumption. How many hot dogs and hamburgers are being bought? How many people are spending money and getting food in return? So we have to account for the inflation. Now, this is part one, two, three. Let's jump over here to part four. How do we do this on a wider scale? Well, we can create what's called an index. 
All right, and an index, you're like, why well, I want to call myself an index? Well, you can look at an index. Don't you want like something you can look at in three seconds? Once you understand it, you know the answer. Trust me, you want to be able to do that. These are shortcuts. All right. Now, we have an index called the GDP deflator. Now, when something's inflated, we need to deflate it. So, GDP deflator. We take our nominal GDP and we divide it by our real GDP. We express our nominal GDP in real terms and then multiply it by 100 to put it into an index. Well, why do you want to multiply it by 100? You're going to see here in a second, you'll be able to read the index much better. So, our fourth step here, <coughs> excuse me, everything we've done up until now to the fourth step where we are calculating GDP deflator. 2019, <coughs> excuse me, um, our base year is 2019. So it is our current year, which is our, our nominal GDP is 200. Our uh, real GDP is also 200. So we take 200 over 200 times 100, put it in index, and that's 200 times 200 is one, or 200 divided by 200, pardon me, is one times 100 is 100. When you look at a GDP deflator index, or you look at any index, 100 is your base year. It's always your base year, okay? Now, we're going to be able to use that base year to compare back. You're going to see here in a second why the index is so important. And everybody's like, you know, why, why an index? All right, so these are three years. Imagine if I was asking you to calculate this for 300 years. So you'd want to be able to look at an index and knock that right out. Now, in 2020, our nominal GDP was 600, so we put that in the numerator. Our real GDP was 350, so 600 divided by 350 times 100, you get 171. Big whoop, what does that mean? Watch this. You can compare it back to the base year, 100, 171, so 171 minus 100, prices went up by 71% since the base year. But I'm gonna say this 100 times, you can only compare it back to the base year. You can only compare it back to the base year. You can only compare it back to the base year in this step. 2021, we take our nominal GDP, which includes inflation. We divide it by our real GDP, which does not include inflation. So basically, you're, you're trying to figure out how much was the effect of prices. All right, so 1,200 nominal GDP divided by 500 real GDP multiplied by 100. You get 240. Now... We can only compare it back to the base year. We can only compare it back to the base year. We can only compare it back to the base year. Why do you think I'm saying that? It's the classic mistake people make in economics. 100 is my base year in 2019. 240 is my GDP deflator in 2021. I can only compare 2021 back to 2019. I know then that 240 minus 100, prices have increased by 140% since the base year. You can only compare back to the base year. You can only compare back to the base year. You can only compare back to the base year. All right. Am I saying it enough? Okay. So true or false inflation, the increase in prices from 2021 to 2020 is 69%. How'd I get that? 240 minus 171, 69%. That's got to be true, right? <clears throat> Wrong. You can only compare back to the base year. You can only compare back to the base year. You can only compare back to the base year. Yeah, I got you. All right. I can't compare these two. I can only compare 2020 back to the base year of 2019, and I can only compare 2021 back to the base year of 2019. You're like, ah, big whoop, it's only three years. What if I was asking you to do this for 100 years? You can only compare, and 1938 was your base year. You can only compare back to the base year. There's got to be a better way, right? Whew. Through this fourth step here, you can only compare back to the base here. You can only compare back to the base here. You can only compare back to the base here. I've been doing this for years, and this is what everybody misses. First of all, they don't watch all the videos. They watch none of the lecture. They do barely any of the reading, and they try to go in and wing it on the homework, and they get like a 38, and they come crying to me. I thought I compare back to like year to year, 2021 to 2020. No, you can only compare back to the base here. I'm going to feel really, really dumb for not watching this video, because how many times have I said that? You can only compare back to the base here unless you go to the fifth step. And that is to compare years other than the base year, you must use the following formula. Okay, economics, it's really, it makes sense. You got GDP that needs, that's got inflation where you can deflate it with the GDP deflator. That makes sense, that's a great name. You wanna hear a terrible name? You can use the inflation rate in year two formula. 
Slow it down. That's a classic economist. We come up with like a cool name that makes sense, and then we come up with the inflation rate in year two formula. What do we do? We take these GDP deflators. We take GDP deflator in year two. That could be any year. That's the more modern year, if you will. And we add, we subtract out, excuse me, GDP deflator in year two minus the GDP deflator in year one and divide it by GDP deflator in year one. Year one in this formula is essentially your new base year. So if your base year of 100 years was 1938, you want to make it 1988, you would make GDP deflator in year one, 1988. Okay? And then you wanted to compare it to 2018, 2018, you would make GDP deflator in year two, 2018. Don't believe me? Let's give us some examples here. Just as a test, let's compare 2020 to 2019. Now we know we can compare these two. That's easy. It's going to be 71%. Let's make sure. So GDP deflator in my second year is 171. Okay, see 171? That's year two. Versus uh, minus GDP deflator year one, that'd be 100. Okay, divided by 100, which is expressing things in that base year. All right, times 100, you would get 71%. So it is consistent with what we're seeing here. Now let's compare 2021 to 2020, 2020 up here. Remember I gave you a true false where I said, hey, this has got to be 69% because the difference between 240 and 171 is 69%. You cannot compare non-base years. You can always compare it to the base year unless you're using inflation rate in year two, GDP deflator year two, which is 240. This is the more modern year, 240, minus 171, which is going to be my new base year. That's why I divide by 171 to put in base year, times 100. And I get that there was not inflation of 69%. There was inflation of 40%. Now, with the inflation rate in year two formula, you can compare whatever years you want. You're like, ah, it's no big deal. This is a lot of information all at once. It's no big deal. It's only three years. I'm going to ask you to compare things like 100 years, 300 years on the test, on the exams. Okay? On the, on the homework. All right. So make sure you're understanding what you're doing here. This is a lot of reading. I just covered like 10 pages in like 17 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. A little longer lecture, but hope you enjoyed it. That wraps up my lectures on chapter 10. Remember, you can not, you can only compare it to the base year. You can only compare it to the base year unless you're using the inflation rate in year two. Thanks for tuning in.